Hello. Now, it's such a lovely day today. What I thought I'd do, take the car out for a run. So we're going to go for a drive in the Mondeo. But first, let me show you how nice the day it is. It's, it's great out here. All the storms have gone. The rain's gone. There's no wind. It's absolutely wonderful out here. Look at this. We've got beautiful blue skies everywhere we go. Watch out for the sunlight. A bit bright up there. Absolutely gorgeous. A couple of little clouds over there. But other than that, there's only those little fluffy bits. Right then. Let's get in that and go for a drive. It's just such a lovely day today. I'll go for a drive. I'll flip the camera around in a minute so you can see where we're going. There's still something. I can't believe though. Absolutely unbelievable. At least I find it hard to believe. But we'll get into that a little bit later on. First of all, let's enjoy a bit of a drive. Now we might as well make the most of this fantastic weather we've got today. It's absolutely marvellous. First day of the year, I'll be able to get out without having to worry about putting a coat on. It's actually quite pleasantly warm outside. A little bit of a chill, but not enough to warrant wearing a jacket or anything like that. Now, while we're going along here, the Ford Mondeo was actually built or sold or designed as a mid-sized car. It went on sale from the 22nd of March 1993, and it was on sale as a Mondeo, uh, the Mark 1, until 1996. And that was when the facelift version, or the Mark 2, as a lot of people call it or know it, went on sale. It was originally available as a four-door saloon, a five-door hatchback, or a five-door estate. Weirdly, though, there was no two-door model. I don't know why. We had a two-door Sierra, we had two-door Cortinas. No idea why we didn't get a two-door Mondeo. Anyway, it was also known in other parts of the world as the Ford Contour in North America and the Middle East, as well as being sold as a Mercury Mystique in North America. Now, obviously, Mercury is the sort of the high-end version of Ford, if you like. So it was a Mercury Mystique in North America. It was built on the CD27 platform, which was designed alongside the uh, the Ford Cougar, but that's the UK Ford Cougar, not the American Ford Cougar from the 60s. Two totally different cars there. There's still that little bit of surprise that I'm, well, it's not really surprise, I just find it unbelievable. But I will get back into that as soon as we can. We'll get back into that uh, what the surprise is or what it is that's, uh, that's pleasantly surprised me. It's a pleasant surprise. I still find it hard to believe though. And it's a lovely day for a drive. I think spring's on its way, folks. It's definitely getting there. Now, the Mondeo was intended as a world car when it was first went on sale. It replaced the Ford Sierra in Europe and the Ford Telstar in Asia. Uh, it replaced the Ford Tempo and Mercury Topaz in North America. Now, despite being built as a world car, the only external things it shared with the Contour was the front windscreen, the front mirrors and the door handles. So it wasn't actually a true world car until the Ford Focus came out, as much as Ford would have liked it to have been at the time. Now, design for the Mondeo started in 1986, long before the end of the Sierra. It actually cost Ford, if you were say, six billion dollars. It was one of the most expensive car designs ever, owing to the fact that it was a complete and total redesign of one of Ford's cars. There's nothing on the Mondeo that shared with the Sierra. Everything was brand new from the, uh, from the first of design, from the first start of design. Now, marketing was shared between Ford of USA and Ford of Europe. Now, this is the interesting bit. Rather over optimistically, the floor pan of the Mondeo was designed so it would accept any combination of, uh, of uh, engine or, uh, or gearbox. So it can take the inline front wheel drive four cylinder, but it can also take the rear wheel drive V8, which is absolutely fantastic and really well worth knowing. It's just a shame they never went any further with that and, uh, and did a two-door V8 version because that would be absolutely fantastic. I wonder, what would that look like as a two-door with a V8? It's got to be with something worth investigating, hasn't it? Anyway, look where we are. Now, there's normally a coffee wagon here and uh, I was hoping to come down and get a coffee this morning, but unfortunately, there's not. So... 
I'm going to have to head back home and get a coffee there. Never mind. It really is a lovely day, though. Look at that view. Something you don't get very often. Wow. Some lovely parts in Northumberland, you know. If you're not from around here, you should, really should make a trip. Come up here at some point when the weather's like this and you actually enjoy it. That sun's getting really bright. Anyway, now the unbelievable thing that I mentioned at the beginning of the video, if you look down there at the fuel gauge, that's on just under half a tank of petrol at the minute. And what makes that unbelievable is how economical this car is. Now I don't know if it's because of the stuff I normally drive. I mean, let's face it, my Dodge Charger, round the doors where I live. Excuse the bumps here. God, my car park wants some repair. As I was saying, the Dodge Charger that I normally drive, round the doors where I live, it'll do somewhere around 10 miles to the gallon. But then it is a 6.3 V8 with a carburetor. And the Ranchero, that's a 5.8 with a carburetor. And around where I live, that does about 12 or 14 to the gallon. So I don't get an awful lot of the gallon. And when I use those on a daily basis, when I'm out and about and enjoying them, I normally find I've got to go to the garage to get some more petrol every three, four days. But in this, the Mondeo, I think I put 20 or 30 quid in it about a fortnight ago and we're still just dropped under half a tank. That might be normal. Let me know in the comments below. Is that normal? That kind of uh, fuel consumption in a car like this? Because it's certainly not normal at the stuff I usually drive. It is just so nice to be out and about though. Today in particular, with the weather the way it is, it seems as though all of a sudden winter's ended summer's on its way or spring's on its way which of course means show season's going to be up shortly the cars to get ready nice warm weather like this to enjoy i'm still thinking about what a mondeo would look like as a two-door v8 i mean obviously that the bell housing uh, is not used on the car at the minute the way ford have designed it and the transmission tunnel does intrude a lot into the cab but there's no prop shaft so the car's obviously been designed by Ford as I said to have a, a V8 fitted a rear wheel drive V8 as well we've got the transmission tunnel here inside the car to uh, put a prop shaft in to take the drive to the back wheels so the floor pan the car itself is pretty much all set up just to slide a V8 in with a prop shaft going to the back end definitely intriguing well worth thinking about. Really is a lovely day for a drive though, especially when it's something like this. You can really enjoy yourself. Now our temperature gauge is up to normal. No warning lights on the dashboard. lovely drive this is. Incidentally, if you're new to the channel and you've just happened to come across this video or YouTube's recommended to you in your feed and you've enjoyed what I've seen so far. I've owned this Mondeo for I think three four months now I think. There's a couple more videos on the channel about it. So you can go looking for those, or I'll put a link up here to the playlist of the rest of the Mondeo videos since I first got it, so you can enjoy those. I'll see you next time. I'm going for a coffee. Bye for now.